Good morning, folks. I hope you had your morning walk, walking all the way from Cloud Expo registration to here. I know Joe had his morning walk today. And uh, we are really sorry for the delay in, the, in starting. Uh, we are waiting for some of the some more people to turn in before we could start. And my name is Krishnan Subramanian. I am the principal analyst of a boutique analyst firm called Rashid Art Research. Uh, it's, a, it's a small firm focused on the great computing convergence of cloud, social, mobile, big data. And uh, we advise both uh, vendors and the buyers on their stra strategy to uh, embrace the newer de developments in technology. Uh, as, uh, I'm also a blogger talking about cloud computing for the past four years. And in the last two years, I've been very bullish on PaaS being the face of uh, IT in the coming years. So as a part of that, I, I, I was talking to many conference organizers asking them to have sessions focused exclusively on pass, but nobody listened to me. So one day I was ranting about it on Twitter that uh, probably we should run our own conference focused on enterprise pass. Sinclair and Jared, they immediately responded and they were very enthusiastic and uh, we started talking about uh, how to do that. And the, the team of three, Sinclair from my friend, uh, Jared from tier three and Wendy from tier three, they sort of uh, helped me get going on the idea and we, uh, we slowly like uh, we talked about uh, how to do it and finally we ended up with DeployCon. So um, I have brought, uh, brought my buddies out here. They're going to give a, 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 a talk on the state of pass right now. So after their uh, you know, state of the pass address probably, I'll, int I'll introduce uh, James Urquhart, our master of ceremonies and we'll get the keynote started. Thank you for your patience, and I once again apologize for the delay. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Wendy White. I'm from Tier 3. Uh, so seated to my right is Sinclair Schuler, who's the CEO of Apprenda, and uh, Jared Ray, who is the CTO of Tier 3. Um, we're going to just... Uh, kind of do a Q&A session with these guys um, and the, the goal is just to give you a good strategic starting point for the day on the role of platform as a service uh, in the industry and um, a good landscape. So with that, I'm going to start with the first question, which is, guys, what, what is platform as a service and why is it important for the tech industry now? So Jared commented just before this that when this question comes up, uh, it's obscure and abstract, so I get to field it. Thanks. Yeah, you're yeah. More than welcome. Yeah. So the what is platform as a service is probably a super hard question because there are, I'd say, like four or five competing definitions right now. Um, at a high level, what we're trying to look at is what happens to computing in terms of abstractions, right? So infrastructure is a service everybody's familiar with. It's focused on virtualization, operating system instances. The first class citizen of that ends up being the operating system, right? Whether you're writing apps or managing infrastructure, you're talking about everything in the context of OSs, never in the context of apps. That's very peculiar, because if you think about the purpose of the entire stack from a server up through the operating system, up through programming language, it's in support of building and delivering apps. So platform as a service is the first time in a while that we see a new abstraction that moves up stack significantly from the OS. It's a layer that sits on top of operating systems that minimizes the citizenship, if you will, of the operating system and instead makes the application itself the first class citizen. So when we look at PASS, the real definition ends up being uh, this abstraction layer that all of a sudden makes the application the key currency of discussion, and its focus is, one, helping applications uh, get managed better, right? If we look at application management today, we're really talking about infrastructure management. We're never, ever talking about application management. It's what do we do with OSs and load balancers. Um, I think the second thing the platform as a service is, is a new layer that equips developers to build better cloud-architected apps. Um, application architectures up until today have almost always been, you know, traditionally very small, very uninteresting architecturally when it comes to scale and things like that. So platform as a service is a technology that makes it very easy for developers to build cloud architected apps without having to worry about the details. Yeah, I'd absolutely agree with what Sinclair is talking about. Um, the couple things I would probably add with platform as a service that we're seeing with our customers and really what is getting defined over the next, I would probably say, you know, one to five years is that you're going to see more and more uh, service discovery and availability across multiple different systems. And what that means for the application is this consumer capability for application and developers. Not only can you go after a, a standard service that you normally consume, but you can easily discover it, consume it, use it, 
And that's one of the big benefits that you see over and over again is this ability to easily have a framework to make those services available. And that's something that PaaS is really enabling over and over again. So Jared, um, you guys both talked about devs in there. I heard devs many times, but uh, you know, the concept today is Enterprise PaaS Summit. So what are we really hearing about PaaS for the enterprise? And what are you hearing from your customers about how they want to consume PaaS in the enterprise? Uh, I'll go first on this one. Sure, go. Uh, you know, our customers, uh, tier three is really focused on bringing out the enterprise and really enabling the cloud for that. What we're seeing over and over again with our customers is the capability of they're looking for just a starting point of how do I build a distributed framework that we can use over and over again. They want to be able to deploy multiple different apps. They want to be able to have that scale, deploy, distribute, uh, consume other services on the back end, and uh, like we were talking about before, they don't want to worry about the OS. They want to be able to swap out that OS whenever they want and really be able to focus on their application tier, and that requires monitoring, <coughs> management, and they want it all in one solution. Platform as, platform as a service really brings that for the enterprise. On top of that, they also have to have the second fold, which is the security part. You need to be able to not only secure the application, but the environment, and be able to show those policies across different levels of the organization. Not only from the security, uh, the chief of security in a company, but clear down to the application owner, so when they're building that application, the framework itself pushes those policies across multiple different aspects, from service consumption to all the way the application tier. So, you know, my, I think my view of uh, what we see Enterprise Pass as comes a lot from experience. I've got CompSci math background and I spent my career as a software developer. And I worked specifically in organizations like Morgan Stanley where it was big enterprise IT shops. And we found there were two big buckets of problems in enterprise IT. One was around application deployment and management, right? If you ever worked in any of these environments, you could be on the software dev side, you'd spend three or four months writing an app, you know, for some business team. And then deploying the application would take three, four months itself. So you look at the timeline and you spend 50% of your time writing code, which is what we got paid for, and 50% of the time doing things like filling out change requests and getting <coughs> DNS entries you know, created for us. And that was absurd. So as a developer, the productivity loss was tremendous in the enterprise in the context of deployment and management. Then second, the sophistication of the apps that we built increased significantly over time. We went from you know, pretty easy, simple applications these big distributed applications, applications that require tremendous scale or interesting architecture patterns. So as developers, we'd invest a lot of time in these esoteric architectures and not so much in solving the business problem. So in enterprise, we found that those two big buckets of productivity loss were huge for developers. Um, so when we think about enterprise passes, how do we solve those fundamental issues? How do we make sure that uh, deployment and management of apps becomes trivial? And then second, that developers who know how to write standard applications can get really impressive outcomes, get architectures that are much more complex and sophisticated to accomplish their jobs. Um, the only other comment I have on Enterprise Pass that we've seen is Platform as a Service has been a public-only construct up until late. Uh, a couple of years ago, we kind of started seeing that enterprises loved the value prop of Platform as a Service, couldn't digest the form factor. They would have, like, like at Morgan, we had 1,100 applications. I think about 400 of them are .NET, and we're a .NET-focused company. Um, they would move maybe 10 of those, 15 of those to public pass. Like there, it wasn't an option for a majority of the apps for tons of reasons and we won't get into them now. Um, so now we're seeing enterprises saying, we love the value prop, we want that software layer in our data center and we'll worry about public cloud later, we'll get to it. But we can't leave that value. So on the enterprise pass side, private has become, I think, a pretty interesting topic for us. Okay, um, so let's talk a little bit about um, openness in PaaS and maybe do a little bit on what the role of openness is in PaaS, and you can say, you know, open source or open platforms, and then maybe also from there, let's talk about the landscape of who the players are in the space and, and you know, what role they have in bringing PaaS to the industry. Sure, so um, on the openness side, I think, you know, what I'm gonna focus on is really openness of PaaS from an infrastructure perspective. We're a proprietary software shop, we're not an open source shop. But the thing that we do focus on is how do we minimize the risk for the customer? And when you look at platform as a service traditionally, think about it in the context of public paths, like a Microsoft Azure, for example, or an engine yard or Heroku or something like that. Um, if it's only in the public context, that means you have no portability of infrastructure. That software layer provides a tremendous value, but it's at the cost of uh, full verticalization, right? You're on the infrastructure that they dictate, and that's exactly what you get. The open pass movement is really focused on two things. Can you broker in support of other technologies? Can you have multiple stacks or you know concepts of support? And that could be database uh, components, that could be runtimes. It's not exclusive to languages or anything like that. 
And then second, can you decouple the past layer from the infrastructure? I should be able to get the value of platform as a service and choose where I run that, whether it be in my private data center or EC2. So openness for us is ensuring that there is no lock-in at that layer because it's the riskiest type of lock-in. Forget about all other lock-in, right? That one is operational lock-in, meaning if your applications run in that cloud and they can't be moved anyplace else, you're in deep trouble because operations change over time. You can make static decisions about stacks and say, I love these APIs, and they're likely not going to ch change on a day-to-day -day basis in a severe way. Um, if you're in an operating architecture, some sort of infrastructure cloud, and that changes tomorrow in terms of quality of service or price, and you can't move your app, you're kind of in, in big trouble. So our focus on openness is really that decoupling of the PaaS layer from the infrastructure layer. Jared, do you want to? Yeah, you know, the only thing I would probably add, uh, you know, Tier 3 sponsored the Iron Foundry project. That's a .NET extension on Cloud Foundry. And one of the things that we saw with Cloud Foundry that we really are passionate about is being able to enable not only, you know, the public clouds, but also the private clouds with a standard set of services. I think one thing that happens many times with current PaaS vendors, and this is, you know, part of our industry's problem, and I think it was even worse with the infrastructure as a service vendors, is there's inherent lock-in. No matter how you play the game, um, every single customer that I talk to says, great, what, you know, what hypervisor are you running underneath or what are you doing underneath because they feel they need that compatibility and many times they do they can't really move workloads paths to this day right now and of course right now platform as a service is in that first inning of really getting uh, getting its feet on the ground when you think about all the current players out there every single one of them has a different way of deploying, different framework, different architecture. And even though we try and make it simple across to every single system, uh, you, you do the same thing. You, you, you end up deploying to and standardizing on a certain platform. Um, I think what's interesting about Cloud Foundry and even Iron Foundry is it's the first open source uh, way of doing a standard framework, right? Having the same standard way. And what, I, what I'm hoping out of this is that and I, we're starting to see traction is that people will start looking at and saying, look, yeah, we have a different type of platform, but realistically, we need to standard, standardize on those protocols. App portability across multiple clouds for PaaS is going to be one of the key differentiators to really enable the enterprise. If we don't do that, especially for the PaaS industry, we're going to have the same problem, and it's going to be the hypervisor wars again. And that's you know what Cloud Foundry right now is about. That is an open, open source project. It basically has enabled it, and you know we we did the Iron Foundry project because of that. We believe that those standards can be portable over and over again. And it's not saying you know one PaaS is better than the other. Uh, as a matter of fact, right now we have three or four .NET PaaSes at this conference. What what we're saying is that to enable the enterprise specifically, you have to be portable across multiple different environments for the customer. They need to not be able to worry about, they need to not worry about what they're gonna be deploying to. Yeah, yeah, I think the deployment piece is the key there in terms of the infrastructure portability because we, have, we don't bump into any customers that say, well, geez, we'd love to just be locked into this particular piece of infrastructure, right? I mean, that sounds crazy to begin with. I mean, even the deployment practice of it, yeah. right? I mean, that is a big problem. How do you deploy, uh, manage, and have standards? And to this day, you know, I think PaaS is the first time that we can actually get to a point uh, in the next couple of years where there is a standard. Where, to where to be clear though, Cloud Foundry isn't a standard, right? Well, I mean, okay. get to a that. <laughs> All right, guys, so then the last question is, um, what's holding back PaaS from broad adoption in the enterprise? Is this going to be the tipping point year, or is it still too early? Um, I can talk about it in the context of what we've seen in the market in the past 12 months and where I think it's going in the, in the next 12 months. You know, even looking at our sales pipeline, the people we have a conversation with on a regular basis on the customer side, if you were to take a snapshot of Apprenda 12 or 18 months ago, it was a very different story. The landscape has changed tremendously. I think a lot of it has been that if you look at how the market's been created and unfolded, Public Pass did a great job of priming the pump, right? Everybody got an understanding of what platform as a service value was. Uh, when enterprises started using it, the first natural outcome was we love the value, but we need it in-house. So that created, to a degree, a market demand for private pass. And if you look at that pipeline change for us over the past 18 months, the, the tremendous shift is apparent. And the size of organization that's, that's uh, actually pursuing kind of internal platform as a service deployments is awesome. So looking at the Global 2000 and what we've seen traction-wise, I think 2012 is by far the best year. I, I don't know if it's going to be the tipping point or breakout year. Um, my guess is that it takes a little more time than just you know the next six months, but I think looking into 2013, you're going to see a lot of that happen. And uh, this year, the growth just uh, year over year has been so ridiculous that it is impressive. 
Um, in terms of broad adoption, my scope is almost exclusively on enterprise. You know, we, we don't focus necessarily on uh, individual developer projects, but looking at that global 2000 space. And I think uh, from an enterprise perspective, it will be this year, between this year and next year, that we start seeing probably a majority of these enterprises deploying privately platform as a service. Yeah, uh, I would agree with Sinclair that um, right now we're seeing uplift and uptick in the market. Uh, we're seeing this at tier three also, especially with our virtual private cloud or our web fabric product, uh, which is our PaaS. And uh, I don't think it's going to be the tipping point. And one of the reasons for this and really around the enterprise is it's not going to be the tipping point until platform as a service and that service fabric underneath the database as a service, the messaging framework, all those things need to be portable and be able to augment legacy environments. Uh, you know, there's a lot of enterprises right now that still have mainframes. Uh, our biggest problem right now for PaaS is how do you, over the next five years, bring in a way to augment their current legacy environments, and that's where they're going to see that TCO value. When you take a normal application, a CRM application, and say, yeah, it's not going to go on PaaS, you don't even have the run times or anything like that, but you can use pieces of PaaS and even augment it later with a dashboard uh, or a web application for that, um, that's really where they're going to start seeing that value. And that's really the key that we have to get to, um, not only on the private side, but also in a pub uh, public environment for them. All right, guys, Chris has uh, given us the hand wave off the stage. Thank you very much for setting the agenda for the day. This 